Hi, I am going to teach you how to love physics. And that happens when you learn how to understand physics. Last time I gave you a conceptual picture of how vectors can be added together. Today I am going to show the method to actually compute these sums in practice. Since most basic physics problems involve adding the combined effects of various vector quantities like forces and torques, this will be probably the most important video I will make. So make sure you really take the time to understand this video inside and out. If you can learn how to add vectors efficiently, you will have the necessary mechanisms in place to solve almost all the physics problems you will see. So I am not understating the importance of knowing how to add vectors. I repeat, make sure you understand how to add vectors. The whole process of adding vectors is made possible through a concept known as adding by components. First, I need to show you what uh, components of a vector are. Remember in the last video, I showed you that the addition of any two vectors produces one resultant vector. Similarly, you can think of it in the opposite direction, that any vector can be represented by the addition of two vectors. So this red vector can also be represented by these two blue vectors, or these two green vectors, or even these two black vectors. We can even represent any one vector equally well by any two other vectors that sum up to that vector. Now it's very useful to represent any vector you encounter with the following two vectors. A horizontal vector lying along the x-axis and a vertical vector lying along the y-axis. So what are these vectors exactly? Well, say we have a vector A that has magnitude A and angle theta above the horizontal. I will call that vector that is parallel to the x-axis A sub x and the other A sub y. These three vectors, A, A sub x, and A sub y, form a triangle. And since A sub x and A sub y are perpendicular to each other, this is a right triangle. Now we have identified two vectors, A sub x and A sub y, so we need the magnitude and direction of these two vectors. The directions are given by our definitions. A sub x is directed along the positive x-axis, A sub y along the positive y-axis. To get magnitudes, we use the available trigonometric relations. We have the magnitude of the hypotenuse, it's A. We also have the angle of one, of one angle of the triangle, theta. So the magnitude of A sub x is simply A times cosine of theta, and the magnitude of A sub y is simply A times sine of theta. Now that we have identified both the magnitude and direction of the vectors a sub x and a sub y, we call them the components of vector a. So we have now broken vector a into its components. You will hear this terminology often, so familiarize yourself with it. The common representation of component vectors that you will see comes from the property that a scalar multiplied by a vector does not change the direction, but only the magnitude. So the component a sub x can be thought of as simply the scalar magnitude of a sub x multiplied by a unit vector in the x direction. The custom is to call the x unit vector x hat and the y unit vector y hat. The advantage of use getting the components comes when you want to add the two vectors. Let's take some vector a with magnitude a and angle theta above the horizontal and add vector b with magnitude b and angle phi above the horizontal to get vector c. Now we can break b into components just like we did with a. Since we can move the vectors around, the addition is still valid as long as they are arranged head to tail. So we can rearrange those component vectors like this. So we have an addition of four vectors now but we can break this up into simpler steps. Consider the addition of a sub x to b sub x. These two vectors have the same direction, parallel to the x-axis. So addition of these two vectors is simply a sum of the magnitudes. The same is true for the addition of the two y components. So the components of c are c sub x equals a sub x plus b sub x, and c sub y equals a sub y plus b sub y. Let's not forget our goal to come up with the resultant vector c from the addition of the two vectors. Well, that vector is simply the hypotenuse of the triangle we have drawn with the components. Since we have the magnitudes of the sides, to get the magnitude and direction of c, we just need to do some more trigonometry. We get the magnitude of c by the Pythagorean theorem, 
and the angle above the horizontal by the inverse tangent of the y component over the x component. Now I'll do that exa an example with numbers. Let vector A have a magnitude 5 directed along 45 degrees above the horizontal. Let vector B have magnitude 3 directed along 60 degrees above the horizontal. To organize the information of the components, I'll use this table. So A sub x is 5 cosine of 45 equal to 3.5. B sub x is 3 cosine of 60 equal to 1.5. C sub x is A sub x plus B sub x equal to 5. A sub y is 5 sine 45 equal to 3.5. B sub y is 3 sine 60 equal to 2.5. And C sub y is A sub y plus B sub y equal to about 6. To get the magnitude of C, just do the Pythagorean theorem. So magnitude of C is the square root of 5 squared plus 6 squared equal to about 7.8. The direction is the inverse tangent of 6 over 5, which is about 50 degrees. And we have done it. We have added together two known vectors, A and B, and produced a new vector, C, identified with its own magnitude and direction, 7.8 magnitude and 50 degrees above the horizontal. This process will be involved in most physics problems you will encounter at this level, so I cannot understate the importance of knowing this process inside and out. So let me review. To add two vectors, first break each vector into its components. To break a vector into components, first superimpose the Cartesian axes onto each vector individually with the tail at the origin. The angle you look at is the one between the vector and the x-axis. You can call it theta. The x component is the magnitude times cosine of theta, and the y component is the magnitude times the sine of theta. Do the same for the other vector. Add their respective components together to get the components of the final vector. Then convert the final vector from component form to magnitude direction form by using the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude and the inverse tangent of, to get the angle above the horizontal. Once again, I cannot understate the importance of being able to handily add vectors. If you can figure this out early in your semester, you will have a much easier time with everything else you will encounter in your early career as a physics student. So do you have it, leave any questions you have down below?